Has Spirit Airlines, the athlete ticker, saved, been punished enough? Too much? The whole airline space has been slammed lately. These investors worry that companies are adding too much capacity, too many new planes, something that could lead to the kind of vicious price wars of the old days when a wave of gigantic mergers cut down the competition. We thought that was over. Spirit has not been spared in the sell-off. We last spoke to the CEO three weeks ago, right after Spirit reported a quarter with better-than-expected headline numbers. Okay, some suboptimal number line items, but the stock plunged 8% in one day. Since then, Spear has continued to move lower, down another 3% since our post-quarter interview at the end of October. Many of the analysts who follow Spirit are now concerned about the company's ability to generate earnings growth next year. But Spirit's management believes that these doubters don't understand the story. Remember back before the big wave of airline mergers when brutal price competition was still endemic across the industry? Spirit was the one company in the group that was consistently profitable because of the ultra-low cost business model where they give you the lowest fares, but then charge you extra for virtually every other amenity imaginable, including some carry-on luggage it should be free on other airlines. Spirit was a growth airline back then uh, when there were no other growth airlines. And remember, those were the days when the price of oil was around $100 a barrel. Now it's 42 bucks. Did Spirit stock has fallen from 85 to 33. We've got to take a closer look with Ben Baldons. He's the president and CEO of Spirit Airlines. Give him a chance to explain whether the analysts are just too negative. Ben, welcome back to the story. Thank you back, Jim. It's, uh, it's always great to be back with you, Jim. I appreciate it. Yeah, because this is a narrative. Um, we got to straighten this out. Now, Ben, I got to tell you, I go back to the October conference call, and you did have this one line where you said, we expect the year-over-year unit revenue decline in the fourth quarter will be greater than the year-over-year unit revenue decline we experienced in the third quarter, and it basically freaked people out. And I am wondering whether the analysts were wrong or whether the guidance that you gave was misinterpreted. No, well, I, I, think, uh, I think there's a couple things going on, Jim. Obviously, um, Obviously, our stock has taken a big hit over the last year. Our multiple has collapsed a lot. Industry multiples have collapsed because, like what you said in the intro, there's a lot of capacity in the industry. And carriers, high-cost ca carriers and low-cost carriers are growing. That creates more seats to be filled. That creates lower prices. One thing that I think people are missing, though, Jim, including some folks at the street, I would say, yeah. is um, that, that our model is inherently unit revenue dilutive. We put more seats on our planes. We fly our planes more hours per day. And we don't look at unit revenue as the key metric that most others do. We look at margin and we look at return on invested capital. And if you look at the fundamentals of Spirit right now, Jim, they're stronger than they've ever been. We're carrying more customers than ever before. Our assumable market is bigger than it's been before. Our costs are lower and getting even lower. So the reality is we're still, we still have all the growth that we had before, and our growth is accreting greatly. Um, and the company's still putting up really good numbers. So... We know the multiples are going to come back at some right. point, or we believe that they will. And uh, right now, though, we think that people are overweighted on that one unit revenue metric to the, to the detriment of missing sort of the growth and the cost story. Well, you know what? That's a good point, because I have seen retailers, for instance, try to, think, try to explain how they're making so much more money than everybody else, but their same-store sales may not be that good. Now, the truth is, Ben, your model is so different that it isn't like, one, you know, you're not really making up some reason to buy the stock. I mean, you have a very specific model that, it, that comes to a new city, and it doesn't take necessarily travelers away from business. It adds to travelers entirely. And I think other airlines have tried to dilute that message, and that's what's really hurt you. I think that's exactly right also, Jim. We've got some airlines out there saying, well, look at Spirit's market share, and doesn't that mean they're taking our customers? But really what that's conflating, Jim, is our share of customers and taking customers from other airlines. If you're running an airline and you carry um, uh, 800 customers a day in a market and, and you have 100% share, and then I come in and lower the price and 200 more people fly and I carry most of them, I'm going to have almost 20% share in that market, but you're still carrying everyone you used to carry. But you might say, wow, Spirit has almost 20%. They must be taking my customers. That's crazy. Now, the, the people who follow you are sophisticated people. So uh, if you had to try to describe it to our individual investors who are longer term, how would you say that Spirit, we should not worry about 2016 the way everyone seems to be fretting about it? Well, you know, if you look at historically at other growth companies in our industry, you can take Southwest, you can take other in companies from other industries, though. If you look over a longer period, you will, it's not uncommon to find maybe a 12-month period where EPS didn't keep up with earnings growth. But, um, but I'm sorry, EPS didn't keep up with capacity growth, right. I mean. Um, but the reality is, 
is Spirit has, from our IPO in 2011, we've sold ourselves to investors as a 15 to 20% growth story with mid-teens kind of margins. We've been able to over-earn that in the last couple of years thanks to lower fuel and high and lower capacity in the industry. But we still think that in t that story is cr really credibly intact. And in fact, like I said earlier, the fundamentals are stronger than ever. So if you're interested in a company that's growing 15 to 20% a year and posting those sort of mid-teens or higher when we can margins, we still think the fundamentals look really great for Spirit. All right, now, in the last few, uh, in the last months, ever since that great employment number, actually, we've seen a number of industries actually had to turn down. We've seen some retailers saying really negative things. Uh, the retailers with negative things, are they any sort of read through at all to spirit? We don't think so at all. Now, we got to remember, though, that um, we carry only the most commoditized piece of the sector. Right. We're only, we only sell low fares. We don't ever sell high fares. So if there's weakness in demand at the higher fare level, we would not see that in our bookings, and others may talk about that. So retail weakness or strength doesn't necessarily correlate to travel strength in the commodity sector of things. Right now, we're seeing very, very strong demand for low fares. Many airlines are able to benefit from that right now because of since because low fuel prices, other airlines can sell low fares as well. But there's a lot of people traveling this year because fares are really low, and I don't think, this year, I don't think there's ever been a year that's been as powerful for showing just how dramatic low fares are in terms of generating lots of volume, and the travel, the airline industry seeing that right now. Ben, I am so glad you came back on. I mean, I, it, look, at a certain point, every stock uh, can get, the price just seems right to me, and your stock has been so overpunished, it's ridiculous. I'm so glad you came back. Ben Beldonza, President and CEO of Spirit Airlines. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Great to be with you. Some stocks do get too cheap, guys. It's not just that everything just goes down all the time. I think Spirit's gotten too, too cheap. Mad Money's back in for the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.